Our last speaker is a self-taught developer and designer who's interested in uh, finding new uses for old hardware, robots, AR, VR, and bots. She is a tech evangelist at Microsoft. She's also our Node Community Committee co-chair. We especially love her for her charge of keeping the internet weird. Welcome, Rachel White. Hi. So thanks for the intro, Tracy. Um, like she said, I'm here today to talk to you about my favorite subject. Um, it's not me. Uh, it's creative coding with Node. So hi, my name's Rachel White. I'm Oho on Twitter, and I'm also the co-chair of the Node.js Community Committee, and I'm a technical evangelist at Microsoft. So before we get into a lot of the creative stuff, I wanted to reiterate some of the things that our other keynote speakers have told you. So, and that's that Node is growing. We all know that it's growing really fast. Um, Mark posted an article on the Linux Foundation site today talking about how the, no the state of Node.js is extremely strong. There's 8.8 .8 million Node instances online every day. It's up 800,000 in the last nine months. Every week, there's 3 billion NPM package downloads. And there's over 1,500 contributors. People are using Node for the front end, for the back end, full stack applications. We're also getting a lot of first time programmers, people that have never touched any language and they're just stumbling into Node.js before. So since, you know, our community is also growing. Um, more Node.js adoption means more people wanting to be a part of the community. I meet so many people throughout the year when I'm helping out at hackathons with Microsoft at colleges who are using Node.js for the first time and they're thrilled with the resources that are available to them in order to like get up and running with no matter what it is that they're working on. They give me like high fives when I teach them to build things and it makes me be like, cool, college students think I'm cool. Um, <laughs> they're just like generally really excited and that excitement in somebody that's learning Node is personally why I love to be involved. The same thing goes for workshops. I teach workshops at conferences sometimes, um, usually always involving Microsoft technology since that is what I get paid for. Um, and it's the same exact situation. People are like, wow, I can't believe how easy it is to get up and running to build a node application. And they're just super excited. And it, they're inspired. They're not just inspired because you know, they're using a new language. They're inspired by the community that's available to them. There's also things like your first PR, which is really helpful for people that are trying to get involved in new languages. Stuff gets tagged across multiple languages on, you know, good for first time contributors. So because of all of this growth, onboarding initiatives are extremely important. When someone is experiencing participating in Node.js for the first time, we have some labels in the core repository, but I don't think that that's necessarily enough. Since we're nothing without our users, the community committee is trying to work on making that better. And a part of the community committee's purview is finding where we can meet the newest users and point them into a welcoming, supportive place where we can foster their growth as developers, but also our own code ecosystem. So we're working on things like educational outreach and internationalization efforts, even though that one issue hasn't been updated in a long time. So if this is something that you're interested in or care about, please come talk to me after this is all over. It's a Node.js slash community committee. So there's lots of groups that are actually working on teaching people Node. There's Node School, Code and Learn, Node Girls, and Node Together. So if you're not familiar, Node School is a meetup with over 180 chapters worldwide. And they're focused on workshops that help build essential skills for working with Node.js. So I can't really see because the lights are really bright, but can you raise your hand if you've ever been to a Node School? That's a pretty good amount. Cool, awesome. And then there's Code and Learn, which we've been hearing people talk about all weekend. Uh, Code and Learn is an official foundation initiative that specializes in bringing in more core contributors to the project. There's one tomorrow. I'm going. I've never contributed to core. I hope I can. I hope you're going. Um, they help out people who want to be core contributors. 
but don't really know how. And then there's Node Girls. Node Girls runs free JavaScript and Node.js workshops for women, non-binary, and trans folk around the world. There's currently three chapters. There's one in London, Sydney, and Melbourne. And then there's Node Together. Node Together was started by Ashley Williams from NPM, and now it's run by me. Uh, Node Together is a way to teach underrepresented groups Node.js. In 2016, they held events in Los Angeles, Bangalore, India, Paris, London, Boston, Amsterdam, Washington, and Austin. 2017, taking a little break. Um, we're currently working on rewriting the curriculum in order to be more focused on creative projects. Um, you know, single page applications for fun things, Twitter bots, and then fun node bot projects. Because I sincerely feel that creative coding is, you know, it's a great way to grab people's attention. We have so many instances of real world studies of people utilizing Node.js for stuff like high scale data, enterprise applications, which is totally fine. But for people that aren't already established in their career, they can't really immediately apply that to something that they recognize. And when they can't identify with the situation, it's harder for them to understand what they're working with. So it's not really too helpful for the new developer or the artist or the student wanting to come into our community. So I'm going to tell you about my first Node.js project, which was also my first hardware project. And it was my first conference talk, because I like to stress myself out. Um, I gave this talk for the first time at Node Interactive 2015. I had absolutely no idea what I was doing, but the community was so supportive, it really inspired me to keep on going. And I still have people coming up to me at conferences who told me that my story was inspiring to them and that they like started trying out Node and hardware because of it. And that's awesome. That's like my fuel for still wanting to be a developer. One of those people who told me about this is Paul Chin Jr., who lives in Virginia. He attended International Node Bots Day, not as a developer, but because he was running a ramen food truck. And he saw all these people doing really awesome stuff, and he wanted to try it out. So he decided to make a Node Bot that is a shrine to Nicolas Cage where you pay tribute and then worship him, which like obviously, yes, I'm listening, please tell me more. Um, he's always looking for more things to make and learn more ways to utilize Node for fun projects. And the feedback that I get like this is what really makes everything worth it. There's also really thriving communities in Twitter bots that utilize Node. Twit is a package that is um, a Twitter API client for writing node bots. It makes it super easy to utilize the REST and streaming APIs. Bot builders make things like fun image bots, random Markov bots, and even activism bots with this tool. It's well documented, and it's super, super accessible. <laughs> I apologize in advance if this creeps you out, but also people that make art are using Node.js. I had an artist residency this summer where I worked on an art series that focused on visualizing cybernetic augmentation through special effects makeup and modern hardware. So I made a mold of my hand, a mold of my friend Angelina's face, embedded hardware in it, hooked up to Arduino Unos. I molded it, I cast it, I painted it, I programmed it, I soldered it, and it's all running off of Node.js. So like whenever people come up to me and talk to me and they're like, how did you do it? And I'm like, it's JavaScript. They're like, okay. <laughs> so I love doing these kinds of things because I feel like you can find people using Node in a lot of unexpected places. And it's not just personal projects that I'm talking about either. Like I said, I work at Microsoft as an evangelist and so the majority of my work is actually educating developers about Azure services as well. But there's no reason that we can't be creative and fun with those endeavors either. So, magical, cute, magical and Cute is a Twitter bot that I built. And since I primarily write Node for all of the work that I do, since it's my specialty, I guess, um, I'm not only evangelizing the great services that Microsoft has, I'm also, I would also like to think that I'm evangelizing for Node. So, I built this Twitter bot in Node that utilizes Microsoft's Face API for facial recognition. It's an endpoint that once you hit it with a you know, picture of a face, it returns an object that has a bunch of XY coordinates for all the facial features. And then I'm uh, running it through a Node app that I built that utilizes graphics magic 
and I'm never using graphics magic again, but it just does a ton of compositing and returns these really cute animal faces. And then I also built this pixel art gallery with the Raspberry Pi. It works by hosting a node application on the Raspberry Pi. It uses Microsoft's IoT Hub to listen to calls coming from a node site that's also hosted on Azure, which use, utilizes uh, streams in Node to send files over to Azure File Storage and then over to the Pi. Once you click on the little pixel art on the website, which is the part that's on the laptop, it pings Microsoft's IoT Hub, saves it to file storage, and then, so the Pi is listening to IoT Hub, it knows that there's a new image. So it pulls it down locally to the Pi and displays it on the gallery. I haven't launched this yet, but I'll be speaking about it next month at NodeConf EU, and I will launch it then. It's not just me either that's being creative with their projects. Um, so this is a colleague of mine, Suze Hinton, who is NoopCat, or NoopCat, on Twitter. And she built this chat bot utilizing Microsoft's bot framework. Um, if the person in the back can click on that video on the right, that would be great. Um, so what happens is, I've never read Animorphs, so I'm not gonna pronounce this stuff correctly, but basically the chatbot reenacts the first scene in the book of the Animorph series. You're a human who's patched into the terminal of a dying Andalite spaceship, which crash landed to Earth on a mission to save the planet. The Andalite, Elfangor, <laughs> briefs you about the evil alien species, the Yerks. So basically, Suze built this really awesome chatbot that is also connected over our IoT hub with this 3D printed cube that has accelerometers inside of it. So you're like talking to an alien who's telling you to do cool stuff. And then if you pick up the, the little box, it like vibrates. And this is, this is like our job. <laughs> We're getting paid to make stuff like this. But when people see stuff like this, they're like, that's ridiculous. I need to know how to build that. And it's all open source, it's all really well documented. The link is down on the bottom. And then my other colleague, who I like, not just because we have the same initials, but because she does a lot of really fun projects. Rachel Weil built the Connected Ness. It's a unique open source project released in May 2016. It is an actual Nintendo from 1985, hooked up to a particle photon that is emulating a type of modem. I don't know how she did this. She cut the controller for the nest, so she had the, the cords then soldered into the Pi so that when you're putting button presses, it's emulating like what you would be typing into Twitter. So it, it's checking all this stuff and displaying it through the old Nintendo hardware. It's ridiculous. And the whole entire backend's hosted on Azure. She also wrote 6502 assembly. I, I'm just really happy that I'm able to work with so many talented people that also share my love for evangelizing through creative coding. So basically, my whole point is fun projects encourage fun people. I code because I think it's fun. Therefore, I try and make everything I do interesting. So it's not only interesting for me so I don't get bored, but also interesting for the people that I talk to. Sometimes real world, real world users are hard to, real world uses are hard to understand for people just getting started out in their career because they don't have the life experience or relevant job experience to tie the code to something they recognize. So by bringing new users to Node with unique and delightful examples, we can help shape them to be better developers by starting out with something that isn't intimidating. So I'm gonna end this talk with my favorite quote as of late that I've been including in most of my talks. It's a quote from Donna Haraway, who is a cultural theorist who does a lot of work with socialist feminism in the intersection of technology. And it's, technology is not neutral. We're inside of what we make, and it's inside of us. We're living in a world of connections, and it matters which ones get made and unmade. So let's keep trying to make good connections through all of the work that we're doing with Node.js and encourage new people not to be afraid to be a part of our community. Thank you.